Greetings, everyone, and welcome to the latest installment of the Centurus Knowledge Series. Today, we're pleased to be presenting to you on the topic of Cognos 1120, a new features explanation and demonstration. Our agenda today, we'll do some quick introductions, and then I'll hand the floor over to our presenter to discuss what's new in Cognos 11.2. Then at the end, Make sure you stick around for a quick overview of Centaurus for those of you who may not be familiar with what we do. Uh, learn about some additional free resources and the aforementioned Q&A. So by way of introduction, I'm pleased to be joined today by Rachel Sue, a Cognos Analytics Offering Management Leader at IBM, who has over 11 years of experience in different areas of Cognos. Her area of focus is Cognos Analytics Reporting, and she is passionate about analyzing the market landscape, as well as transforming and modernizing business intelligence. We appreciate her for proven track record of delivering advanced product features. My name is Michael Weinhauer. I am a director here at Centurus, and among my various roles, I have the pleasure of hosting our Knowledge Series events. So before we get into the presentation itself, we always have a couple of, I have a poll or two, and today is no exception. So uh, we'd like to get a handle on uh, what version of Cognos are you all using? So you just select one of these, pretty straightforward question. Do you have something older than Cognos 10? Are you still on C10? Are you on uh, 11.0 or 11.1? Uh, showing back the results here, you can see that uh, the vast majority, uh, nearly three quarters, are on some version of Cognos 11.1, uh, another 20% on 11.0. Uh, good to see there's Nobody pre-Cognos 10, but there's still a 10% out there still sitting on Cognos 10. The old guard, late adopters. And then the uh, next slide, the next poll I'm going to launch here is, what are your biggest challenges that you are running into with Cognos? And this is a multiple choice. You can select all that apply. So is it the enabling or the adoption of self-service? And we realize that that's not necessarily just a technology question. Uh, is it performance or report sprawl or general cleanup? We all know that those Cognos environments, their packages and reports and everything can get really big and, and cluttered after a while. Is it um, moving from on-prem to the cloud or, or a hybrid environment? Is it running hybrid environments and the challenges that, that those introduce and or uh, licensing, right sizing or licensing to match your current use? All right, I'm gonna go ahead and close this out and share it back. So. Adoption of self-service and performance sprawl, general cleanup. That's not too surprising to see, uh, you know, performance and and whatnot being a a top one. And adoption of self-service easier said than done. So uh, not too surprising there. And then the other three kind of running uh, pretty distant, third, fourth, and fifth, as it were. Interesting. Great. Well, thank you. That's always great to sort of get a finger on the pulse of our audience. Thanks for sharing your uh, your your input and insights. And with that, I'm going to hand the floor over to Rachel for the main part of the presentation. Go ahead, Rachel, take it away. Thank you, Mike. Um, hello, everyone. This is Rachel. I'm so happy that uh, I get to have this chance to speak with you today and spend the next uh, hour or so around uh, Cognos Analytics. And this time it is to introduce all the new features that, that's coming with uh, the next uh, version of Cognos Analytics, which is going to be 11.2.0. Before I start, I'm just going to recap what's the most recent current version of Cognos on the market today, which is 11.1.7. That is the last release of the 11.1 stream. 11.1.7 is the long-term support release, which means there will be no more releases, including fe uh, features coming after 11.1.7 within the 11.1 stream. We continue to put out defect fixes through fix packs. Uh, fix pack two was released uh, um, uh, last year, and uh, fix pack three is expected sometimes in Q2 of this year. It will be after the release of 11.2.0. The next one that's coming out, which is Cognos Analytics 11.2.0, is currently targeted for the end of April or early May. Uh, we don't have the exact date, but the release is ready. We're just doing some very final touch-ups, uh, quality control. It will be out of the door in no time. So we're very, very close to it. And today, I'm going to talk, talk about all the new features that's 
going to be part of the 11.2.0 stream. For 11.2.0, the uh, biggest change you will see, you will find out, is the our home screen, home page, uh, content, navigation, Cognos default portal, UI revamp. Now, some of you may say, okay, changing the UI again, I don't care. But it's not just the UI, not the, just the color pictures, but also we've done a lot of improvements around navigating the portal, navigating, finding your content, discover your content, organizing your content, everything around customization of your home page uh, based on a lot of customer feedback. And this is just a quick highlight of the list of things that we've done. You can already see we have made uh, improvements and uh, implemented new features in many, many different areas, almost all areas of the product. So let's start with looking at the home page. I'm going to flip to my browser and show you this in the product. This is the section where I'm going to do live demo and I'll flip back to my uh, slide deck to go through some other features. And please, uh, uh, Mike and uh, Andrea, let me know if you don't see my browser and uh, if I don't hear anyone yelling at me, I'm going to continue. I see your browser so, just fine. Okay, perfect, thank you. This is the newly designed home screen of Cognos Analytics. This is a default home page you will see when you install Cognos without any customization. This is what you see. We have adopted IBM Carbon Design System, which is the standard design system across all IBM strategic products. So if you have other IBM products, such as some of the Watson products uh, or Cloud Pack for Data, you will probably see some uh, similarity, familiarity here. Uh, this is the newest designs, cutting edge. It is very sharp and clean. Uh, I personally love the colors and love the fonts that's uh, chosen and a lot of the choices around icons even. We've brought more colors in. We've carefully examined every single icon even to make sure they represent the right information to the user that's meaningful. So let's take a look at this home screen. First of all, at the top, this is the banner that can be customized. You can change the picture, of course. You can change the text here. You can change the logo. You can customize it any way you want to make it look like your own organization's portal. Uh, you can come here and watch some of the videos to understand how to um, use the new portal, what are some of the new features getting started in Cognos 11.2. These are newly made videos. Uh, taking a product tour is available if you're using a cloud environment. And this top banner can be closed off. So if you just click this close sign, uh, it's going to go away. And we will remember that you don't want to see it. So next time when you access the same environment in your browser, uh, it's going to be disabled because you've already made that option. You can bring it back from the uh, your user's profile settings to bring back the welcome banner. The next section, this is your single click quick access to some of the important components, uh, things that you may want to have to do. This is presented here as big tiles based on your capabilities. So if you don't have the capability, you're not given access to upload data or prepare data, which is using data module or doing data exploration, you will not see any of these, right? Uh, you will see whatever you have, you're given access to. And again, this can be minimized as well. So if you're looking at disable the welcome banner and minimize quick launch, now you're really looking at your home screen. It's this section where you can focus on a lot of other things. Now, getting started tab will allow you to browse all of our samples that's installed with Cognos 11.2.0. We have how-to videos you can watch, and we have created new videos for a lot of different areas of the product. Uh, Accelerators catalog, you can uh, access that link directly here, which contains a lot of good samples anywhere range from custom visualizations to custom control JavaScripts for uh, reporting or extensions for the portal, extensions for dashboards, such as our what if analysis widget through extensions, 
uh, sample dashboards. You can take a look at our uh, design ideas, get some design ideas of some in interesting uh, um, ideas about uh, dashboard design or some of the new sample reports are hosted there as well. There are many different type of artifacts that best practices are hosted at Accelerator's catalog. And that link can be now found directly on your homepage. And learning resources, the uh, learning pane that we introduced to the product in 11.1.6 version can be accessed here. Uh, this is where if you want to get information, how to information, you can find them here. We search around the uh, throughout the internet, uh, knowledge center, documentation, uh, community links, YouTube videos. We have them all searched here and presented here. Uh, it's contextual. So if you are right now my home screen, so we're giving you a high level of telling you about interface, how to get started, dashboard reports and all that thing. But if you are currently instead of a dashboard, or instead of a reporting interface, we will show you the information that's relevant to where you are. Now, the second tab is recent. This is what are some of the app objects that you've recently accessed. And you have the tile view or the list view. I'm going to go into that a bit more uh, just in a bit. So this, these tabs, we will remember where you are. So if you have navigated away from the screen and coming back here later, we will know where you are and it still present you where you were. This is customizable. You can add your own custom tabs. You can add a lot of different tabs to give user very quick access, direct access to different folders or to a report, to a dashboard. Uh, it's a uh, uh, it's a way for you to customize uh, navigation, if you want to say navigation, on directly on the home page on, on your portal. Now, in the previous releases, you would have remembered on the left hand side, you've got a vertical uh, context menu bar. Um, up the top bar, what we call is application bar, and the left hand side is the navigation bar. And that bar stayed there to show you where your my folders, uh, team folders, so public folder, public content, a managed area, we're creating new assets. So we've taken that away. We've given that space to you to really allow you to have a full screen view of your home page. Right? We're not injecting any extra things, but that can all be, uh, that's all accessible from the left hand side, left top. This is what we call a humbler menu. The three or that's a four horizontal lines. When you click on that, all that things is there where you can access your uploaded file. You can create uh, different things like this is where you would access dashboard report stories. I know there's quick access, but you can still access um, them all here, other applications, jobs and your manage is is right here. Right. And your recent uh, access information are still available over here and you can uh, choose delete or you can come back to this home page. So what's more important, the most important part I want to uh, introduce you to is this new way of navigating your content. So when you click on content, we're going to bring you to a full screen, allowing you to have the most room space available to navigate your content. There's my content, team content, samples, and you can add other things here. You can still access uploaded files. You can create new uh, new things here. So we're giving you the full space because a lot of customers, they may have hundreds of folders, tens of thousands, millions of reports, and their folders are over 10 levels deep. So it, it, was, it could be difficult if um, you're using the current uh, design which is in a pane in a panel to navigate uh, your content whereas now you will have all the room you have available for my content you can access team content in full screen and not only that we are providing you with the ability to access a list view so in this list view you can have a different uh, organizations so by default it's actually going to look like this right? We, when we design our product, we keep in mind about user experience on uh, mobile devices. And that's why sometimes you may see there are larger gaps. It's by following best practices where uh, 
it may be difficult for you to use finger on touch screen to making selections if things are too close together. But if you're on a desktop, and of course, depending on what device that you use to uh, use Cognos, you could have a, a shorter view of the list, which will allow you to see more content in one view. You can also have a compact view, which will give you even more content within the same view, same list, same screen size. Uh, you can filter down different types. If you're looking to search for certain things, you can sort them by modified date. Uh, uh, you can filter them by modified date and you can sort them. And we've added the ability to refresh, which was not available previously. You can also, you, you will also realize that we have added different uh, icons and brought some colors back uh, for all the different objects. So you can see that data module has a different color with the icon. We also automatically sort folders at the top and uh, other objects at the bottom. This list view is also very, very useful, helpful when you're trying to select multiple objects. Let's say uh, you want to select a few, you can use checkboxes and use shift key to multi-select, or you can do a block editing, move or copy or delete all the actions available that applies to the selected objects are available on this blue bar. You can also just uh, select the top level and make selection of everything, which was not uh, easily available in the previous versions. Now, another thing I want you to uh, take a look at, I want to show you is, which this is available in either list view or tile view, but I just like to flip back and forth, uh, is uh, when you select an object, let's say a report, you have this detail pane open on the right-hand side. This, and then that will stay there. In many cases, you may have reports or dashboard that name very similar. Um, and their names could be very long, except the very last word that's different. And sometimes you have to go through quite a few reports or dashboard to figure out which is the correct one that you're trying to open or modify or to run. Now with the detailed pane, which stays on the right hand side, whenever you make a selection of a different object, it's going to update based on what object is being selected. And you can see I'm clicking different things here it my detail pane stays, but updates, showing me the information that applies to that object that's currently selected. And when you have an object selected, on the right hand side, you can access properties, you can perform actions, let's open or run it or edit or create other things with it. Or the actions are also available at the top. You can perform things from different locations. And if you're, you, you're used to get to the actions or information directly on the object, you can click the three dots still, the overflow menu that's available on the actual object, and a, uh, a pop-up is going to open, a, a menu is going to open. And you can see we've even changed the highlight color with being careful about using the right color to present the right information. For example, on delete highlight, we're actually going to show you red instead of uh, uh, others because we're calling out attention that you're trying to, you're going to perform something that may not be undo. You cannot undo that. Now, let me go ahead and show you the changes made in each components just a little bit from UI perspective. We have moved the uh, application buttons, such as save or edit, uh, outside of the application bar, <clears throat> the top portal application bar, into the application itself, the application frame itself. So anything that applies to the component that you're using are now residing uh, within the component. So here, if you're looking at edit button, save, share, maximizing widget connection. These are things that applies to this dashboard. 
it is now outside of the portal of the top portal and now it's inside of the dashboard we have made updates to the dialogues when you select a source or trying to save a dashboard now you can finally filter and sort helps you to navigate and locate the right a location to save a dashboard or trying to find a data source add to add to a dashboard. And very similarly, if I am creating a report, this is the updated uh, report navigation. Where you can see the edit, save, these icons now have, these icons are moved out of the top application bar into the reporting interface itself. And again, very similar to uh, dashboard, the select the source dialog has been updated. The save a dialog also has been updated with the new dialog. And if I add anything, let's say a list, you can see the properties in reporting is updated as well. Uh, any properties that only has two state, we're not giving you a drop down list anymore. We'll automatically change them to a toggle switch. It's very easy for me to understand which one has been turned on, which one's dis disabled, which one's enabled. Now I've got a report open. I've got a dashboard open. If I want to search for content in the previous versions, you will have to go back to the home screen, find that search option. We brought the search app at the top level, and that's available. It doesn't matter which view where you are uh, within Cognos Analytics, you will always get the search option. Let's say I want to search for something, uh, short customer experience. It's going to display the search result and uh, present that to me in full screen and take me there, directly there. This really helps me to understand which object I'm really looking for and where they are. There's a lot of room for me to uh, look at them and there are additional uh, options available. I can save my search result and all the other two items that were available are still here. You can see there's actually more room now to display the name of all these objects. All right. So that was a uh, quick run through about the newly improved home portal uh, and navigation. I'm going to switch back to my presentation slides and continue with some other exciting enhancements. So I've done this. I want to show you this is an example of the uh, customized home page, home screen, where the uh, top left you can see uh, I've made modifications of the uh, tabs and the top welcome banner. And the bottom right, you can see I'm actually using a report as one of the tab here. Right? It could be a folder, it could be a report, it could be a dashboard. There are lots of options. It's very flexible. I've gone through the navigation improvements. Next, I'm going to talk about our mobile app. Uh, this is the new Cognos Analytics mobile app that allows you to access your pinned visualizations, looking at your pin boards, receive uh, OS native notifications push directly to your phone, uh, allows you to share from a, from a screenshot of a visualization, allow you to annotate, allow you to set threshold of what, your notification. This is the new mobile app that we released summer of last year. At the initial release time, it was iOS only, and it was only available for Cognos on cloud. We released Android support for cloud, in February 2020, so two months ago, and just last month, we also released the support for Kano Sound Prime. So as of March, you will be able to use this new mobile app for Kano Sound Prime, Kano Sound Cloud for iOS and Android. As long as you are on the Cognos version of 11.1.7 FP2 or higher. Well, I guess there is no higher yet, but uh, if you want to use the mobile app, uh, install 11.1.7 FP2, you will be able to uh, uh, get the update. You will be able to use the mobile app. And going forward, the mobile app is built into the 11.2.0 server. You no longer have to make a uh, update to your Cognos server in order for it to work with the mobile app. It's going to be part of the 11.2.0. 
So I spent some time talking about home page improvements, UI navigation. Now let's take a look at each component. For dashboarding, we, this release, really focuses on performance, performance, performance. And this is a continued effort. It's not just a one-time only uh, improvements. For this phase one, we looked at the initial rendering, initial execution of the dashboard to improve the performance from that perspective. We looked at many different areas for improvements, um, including but not limited to metadata. Uh, we talked about loading the glass code with it, reducing the code that we have to load for uh, JavaScript and CSS. And we've looked at how to optimize queries behind the scene for you automatically, how to better leverage in cache. And here is a quick video to show you the difference uh, between Condos 11.1.7, which is going to be in the top right small screen. That's the 11.1.7 dashboard. And the larger screen is the 11.2.0 dashboard, same exact dashboard. 11.2 is already finished rendering whereas 11.1.7 is just starting to load ghost images. The layout is rendered, but we're still looking to fill in the widgets. And I'm trying to talk to, to fill in the time because it's taking a longer time there. So that's the performance difference that you just saw, right? Of course, depends on how your dashboard is authored, how your dashboard uh, query is authored. If the bottleneck is actually your database, and that's not something this enhancement uh, is going to help you, right? If you have really bad querying logic there, um, this may not, you may not see as much improvement. But anything around, uh, you know, rendering up front, uh, you will see if you're opening just the same exact dashboard if in 11.2.0, you will see quite a bit of improvements. Now, going forward, like I said, this is just phase one we did for this release. Going forward, we're going to look at um, you know, further enhancement improvements for initial rendering, loading of dashboard, but also interactivity when you're making a selection, highlighting things, doing a filtering, a sorting. We're looking at how to improve the performance for all these as well going forward. Uh, the other thing that we've brought into or added to dashboard is uh, two new visualizations. These are visualizations already existing reporting today, but dashboard didn't have them. So we brought a box plot into dashboard as well as a radar chart. Now for reporting, we released the support of baseline for visualizations for the 11.1 visualizations in 11.1.7 release. Back then, we supported categorical index, percentage, and numeric values. That allows you to use any of these three to uh, author a baseline. In a lot of cases, customers want to, you may want to create your baseline based on a condition or a quite complex condition or based on a different data item or based on a very complex query logic. You need to use events calculations, expressions, so your baseline actually changes uh, depending on the condition. And with that, we brought the support of uh, query calculation and layout calculation into the baseline support. So now that you can create your baseline more dynamically and it will change, it will draw render based on different conditions. Uh, baseline support is available for all visualizations that has axes. Without axes, it doesn't really make sense. Um, they are, baselines are rendered for PDF and Excel server-side rendering that's all supported. We've also brought, uh, we've also updated our support for uh, languages on labels for uh, for maps. So on the right, sorry, on the left hand side, that's the location labels in uh, English. And on the right hand side, that's location labels, same location labels in local language on the map. Uh, I've talked about this, the application specific buttons are moved inside of the application. And this is one very little improvement feature, but that goes a long way, could have big impacts for report authors, it's going to save you a lot of time, is the run button, how the run button and a different uh, format uh, works. So in the previous versions, when you're inside of report author interface, if you want to run it in PDF, you have to make two clicks every time, you have to go and select PDF. 
Whereas now what we changed is that down arrow will show you the current selected format. And every time you click on run, it's going to run that format that's currently selected. So in this example, if you say run Excel from the down arrow, it's going to run in Excel. Next time when you click run button, it's going to automatically run Excel. It saves you a lot of clicking if you are constantly testing different versions, sorry, different formats of the report when you're authoring a report. And you all know what I'm talking about. We've added two new themes in reports uh, for Dashboard. Dashboard has themes built into the product. Uh, there's a light theme and dark theme. They were all being updated to the Carbon Light and Carbon X theme. For reporting, the theme stands through style reference reports. We've added two style reference reports, one for uh, Carbon X Light. Again, this is based on the carbon design system from IBM. Uh, you can see the border. Uh, the background color, everything has been uh, pre-styled uh, for you if you choose this style reference report. It is quite nice and quite uh, sharp. Uh, if you're thinking about playing around with your reports or dashboard authoring, you could uh, try out our new carbon theme. And we have the palettes, everything automatically uh, uh, changed and updated for you as well. Next, S3 storage. This is around importing SSL certificates, and this is a huge usability improvement for cloud customers. Um, you no longer have to go through command line utility and then uh, trying to import certificates through file system of Cognos servers, which is, could be very difficult to access. We support S3 technology-based cloud storage to import uh, SSL certificates now. You may remember we actually implemented a support for cloud storage to store report outputs. So when you specify a report safe to file system, now the modern way people are doing is saving everything to a cloud storage, right? So you can just give us your uh, cloud uh, connection information, your cloud storage connect size is S3 based. Uh, and then we will be able to uh, save report outputs there and we'll be able to import certificates from there as well. AI Assistant is the uh, feature where it allows you to have a, have a conversation with the software using natural language. You can ask questions by typing. Uh, we actually support this on our mobile app as well through voice input or typing on your phone. And the AI Assistant will be able to answer a question by generating a visualization where you can include on your dashboard stories or explore as part of their presentation. And our forecasting support uh, allows you to predict the next N period of uh, data on multiple series on both line chart and column or bar charts. These are two very popular features that we're working for relational data sources only. We've added the support of AI assistant and forecasting for when you're using OLAP cubes as the data source, so power cubes or uh, plenty analytics cubes, you know, when I mean TM1 cubes, when you're using all these uh, cubing technologies as your data source, you'll be able to use these two new features. Next, I'm going to introduce our very first Watson moments. Let me explain this. IBM invests a lot in research. IBM research has done a fantastic job in many, many different areas. A lot of them are technologies you know, uh, uh, developed, but not being put into product. So what we've done is we're looking at all that technology that's available from IBM, looking at what can we do, what can we leverage to help our Cognos customers. In this case, we're using a IBM research NLP engine to improve. So in addition to what we already use, we're using the IBM Research NLP Engine library to improve our AI assistant. So when you're asking a question, we're trying to understand data. Not only we can suggest a visualization, but in some cases, we if we have enough information of the data, we can give you deeper additional insights to explain your question, explain this answer. In this case, uh, I have additional insights, what's the insights to help me to explain 
uh, revenue, to help me to understand revenue further, right? It's going to make me more confident with uh, the visualization and building that I'm including as part of my reports or dashboards. Uh, some people are not so clear about, oh, is this a different offering? What's the inside? Is, this, is it its own product? No, this is something that's built into Cognos, leveraging Watson technology. That's why we branded uh, Watson Insights, but it's not its own product. We're not selling it. We're not asking more money from you. It is part of our offering with Cognos Analytics. No additional configuration or setup. It's part of our AI smart engine that's part of Cognos. And like I said, this is our first Watson moment, which means there will be more coming. We're looking at enhancing Cognos with more Watson technology, more things that we can get from IBM research into Cognos, and you will see more Watson moments in the, uh, down the line in future releases. Watson Studio integration. Uh, Watson Studio uh, Cognos and Watson Studio integration was available on cloud only. And through that integration phase one, a, a Watson Studio user can connect to Cognos data, augment Cognos data, and say that augmented data directly into Cognos. And that's about it. With our integration of Jupyter Notebook, which has been out for many releases, uh, users can use Notebook IDE through Python or R, connect to Cognos data, augment data, and then save that augmented data into Cognos. But on top of that, users can you include output cells into their reports or dashboard as part of the presentation. The improved Watson Studio integration is to add that final phase, which is to allow you to have a in, um, output cells from Watson Studio as part of Cognos reports or dashboard for presentation and distribution. And this is available for both on-prime CPD cartridge as well as uh, uh, our cloud offerings. Last but not least, and this is the one that a lot of people may be asking and having a lot of questions or discussions. Every time I present this slide, there'll be lots of talks. Is our conformance update. Um, we are going to deprecate our support of Internet Explorer 11 with the release of Cognos 11.2.0. You will not be able to access launch Cognos 11.2 and onward if you're using Microsoft IE. It's not just Cognos that's going away with from IE. Microsoft itself has already stopped supporting IE with their uh, cloud products. Teams, uh, Office 365, these are all su stop supporting IE already. And going forward, there is no plan for Microsoft to further enhance IE. We've had lots of challenges with IE, which is a very old piece of technology, and a lot of customers are still using it. But because Microsoft is going away with it even, there will be no further support from Microsoft side. Any limitations, any issues with identified with IE, Microsoft is not being able to provide updates. Microsoft's uh, browser direction is Chromium Edge, not even the legacy Edge. Microsoft is going to provide an updater. I thought it was this month, April. If it hasn't happened already, they're going to uninstall legacy Edge with the new Chromium Edge. So going forward, Microsoft supported Microsoft, Microsoft's browser's Chromium Edge. Starting 11.2.0, we're not going to support i11 anymore. You can continue to use i11 with Cognos 11, uh, Cognos 11.1 version and 11.0 versions, but not 11.2 versions. For some customers are currently using legacy studios, such as query studios and analysis studios, you will not be able to use IE with them, but you can still use Firefox with them, uh, or you can still use IE and Firefox with them in an earlier version. We do not have plan to perform to uh, provide conformance update for these studios. They've been deprecated for a long time. We're really, really hoping, and we were willing to help you to move off these two studios and move into the modern studios, modern components. Uh, feel free to contact us, uh, uh, contact uh, your, your service provider for help if needed. Um, PowerPlay Studio currently supports Firefox and uh, Google Chrome. 
we're going to support Chromium Edge for PowerPlay Studio in 11.2.0. Another thing that's not listed here, people may ask, is Event Studio. Event Studio is not deprecated. It's still supported. We have no plan to deprecate Event Studio. It is currently supported by uh, IE and Firefox. We're looking at updating conformance for it to support Chrome. When I talk about Chrome, I mean Google Chrome and Chromium Edge, both. There are two uh, IE-specific features currently. Um, within reporting within a product really is PDF drill through. So PDF drill through is when you're running a reporting PDF format and you click a link, pre-author drill through link within the PDF and have it drill through to open another report in whatever format that is. This is currently was only supported in IE through the uh, Adobe uh, PDF plugin in IE. Now, because we're moving away from supporting IE, we've added the support of PDF drill through in Google Chrome, Chromium Edge, and Firefox. So with this version of 2.0, you'll be able to use any of these browsers, so kind of supported browsers, to use your uh, report uh, PDF drill through. Uh, we have uh, developed a, uh, we've uh, done work to implementing PDF, using PDF uh, JavaScript library uh, to, to provide this support. Now, the last thing is active report. Active report MHT file is IE only. Uh, what we're doing now is to implementing a desktop app, which, which is supported on both the Windows and Mac OS, which was not actually working for uh, consuming MHT. So with this app, customers will be able to continue uh, rendering and interact with MHT files uh, offline, interactively, of course. And this is going to be a free app, no charge. This meant to replace uh, your IE browser for you. It is. Uh, it does not. It's not part of the 11.2.0 release. It is targeted to be released the month after 11.2.0 release. We're going to host it on our community page. Anybody can go and download. It is something. It's just a lightweight app where you uh, have it installed on your desktop, and um, it could open an MHT file. Uh, so far, testing testing's been showing very promising results around performance. Even uh, we we all know that IE was not performing well with some large MHT files, and this could allow you to open larger MHT files potentially, and see much better rendering in the interactivity time. All right, so that's my last. Uh, slide around what's new for Cognos uh, 1120. I know actually I've, you know, I didn't get to introduce my teammate uh, Tim Maston has been here. You probably already seen his name there. Hopefully he's been helping me to uh, answer questions because we anticipated lots of questions and then I couldn't uh, do all of them. So Tim, Thank you so much. Uh, he's, he, we're working on the same team. He is another uh, product manager. Previously, we called ourselves uh, offering managers. Now we just changed our title as this is IBM thing. Now we're back on product managers. Uh, so Tim, are there any outstanding questions? Is there anything that uh, I should uh, announce? Is there anything that you want to announce out through uh, polling the questions? Yeah, Rachel, I think we um, we, we want to hold the questions until the until we go through the next set of slides here. Um, okay, perfect. Um, if that's okay, so uh, so yep. stick around, everybody. That's a that's a great presentation, Rachel. Thank you. That's a lot of great information. Stick around and get your questions, and we do have a ton of questions, so hang around to the end for those. And I'll go through this really quickly so we maximize the amount of time that we have there. Tim has been sort of diligently answering those questions. So um, yeah, as the number of questions and the, the variety of environments that we see here sort of uh, lend credence to uh, the waters get pretty deep pretty quickly when you're looking to uh, modernize your Cognos environment for a numbers of fact, number of factors, not all of which involve Cognos. Um, so if you're trying to uh, develop and adopt uh, a self-service Analytics in your organization, um, those are the kind of things that we can help you with, whether it's that or performance tuning, rationalizing all those reports and models so you can adopt data modules and have a more efficient and performant environment. Uh, if you're running Cognizant Concert with uh, another BI platform, how to, how to manage that, we're, we're conversant in the major BI platforms. 
if you're looking to help right size your Cognos licensing or uh, getting off an older version of Cognos up to the latest and greatest. So there's a link there in the slide where we can help you with that, or you can always reach out to us via info at centurus.com and I'll give you that information at the end. A um, couple quick slides about us here. The next slide uh, at Centurus, we concentrate our expertise on business intelligence, specifically modern BI with the depth of knowledge across the entire BI stack. On the next slide, um, our clients know us for providing clarity from the chaos of complex business requirements, disparate data sources, constantly moving and changing targets and regulatory environments. We made a name for ourselves because of our strength at bridging the gap between IT and the business side. We deliver our solutions that give you access to reliable and necessary data across the organization so you can quickly and easily get answers at the point in pass in the form of the decision you make and the actions you take. Our consultants are leading experts in the field of analytics, having years of pragmatic real-world expertise and experience in advancing the state of the art. We're so confident in our team and the Centurus methodology that we back our projects with a 100% money back guarantee that is unique in the industry. Backing that up is a long, strong history of success. We've been doing this for quite a while, over two decades now. You can go to the next slide, Rachel. Uh, over 1,350 clients and over 3,000 projects. We work across the spectrum from Fortune 500 down to the mid-market, solving business problems across just about every industry and most functional areas, including the Office of Finance, Sales and Marketing, Manufacturing, Operations, HR, and IT. We pride ourselves in the fact that our team is both large enough to meet all of your business analytics needs, yet small enough to provide personalized attention. Um, if you're interested in joining us, the next slide we're actually hiring right now. There's a couple of roles you can see there. You can uh, email us at jobs at centurus.com or head over to the Centurus website there via the link. Uh, we've got, uh, we're always looking for good talent. Next slide, uh, we invite you to, again, visit the centurus.com, Centurus resources uh, area, the resources area where there's hundreds of free resources, including webinars such as this one, uh, all the way to our, our fabulous up to the minute, easily consumable blogs. Uh, among those, we have uh, these great uh, events coming up that are uh, pretty much always free here. So we're doing another Cognos webinar in June on how to successfully implement self-service analytics, and we'll be focusing on Cognos analytics in that. Uh, they're all pretty much on Thursdays, 11 Pacific, 2 p.m. Eastern time. Uh, we'll be doing one on Power BI Report Builder and Paginated Reports, and we'll be doing one on our, uh, our connector, which enables you to connect Power BI and Tableau to your Cognos metadata and reports. And then uh, finally, on the training aspect, be remiss if we left that out, we offer training uh, on Cognos and the, the three major platforms we support. We um, are ideal for organizations that are running multiples of these platforms or those moving from one to the other. We provide training in all the core modalities from instructor-led sessions to one to small, you know, small group mentoring to instructor-led online and self-paced e-learning. And we can mix and match that to meet the needs of your organization. And then before, last slide before we get to the Q&A, um, we've been provided, we have hundreds of free resources over on our website. You can see the, the list here, and we've been committed to sharing our BI expertise now for over a decade. And if you want to advance to the next slide, we're at the Q&A here. And I don't know if you had a chance, uh, Rachel, I know you're sort of man in the slides here, and I know Tim has been diligently answering questions, um, but he was going to leave the... Uh, the answer blank for the ones that we were going to ask sort of live. Yeah, I can, I yeah. can, uh, I can handle those. Oh, you want to tee up a couple of those? Great. I was just scrolling through yeah. looking for kind of the first one. Go ahead. Sure. Sure. Yeah. There, there's, there's a few um, common ones here that have been uh, rapidly uh, typing uh, this whole time in the background. Um, one thing, Rachel, uh, that has come up in a few questions that, that um, people have is about our whole long-term support release. And the status of uh, you know our you know our various versions now uh, with long-term support. So we've got the older 11.0.13 long-term support release, the current 11.1.7 long-term support release, and then also people asking what the timeline would be for 11.2.0 entering that status as well. So I mean, okay. Uh, so the 11.0.13 is going out of support soon. It's going to be uh, uh, the spring this year, sometimes this year soon. 11.1.7 uh, is the uh, current long-term support stream for 11.1 release. So if you're looking at our support uh, 
life cycle is generally around two years and a little bit. So uh, 11.1.7 was it released uh, August last year. So if you're calculating it forward by two years, that's usually how long we're going to support it for. Uh, 11.2.0 is going to be released uh, uh, late end of April or early May, which means then um, we're going, well, we're not going to uh, put, so this is 11.2.0 is not the long-term support release. And this is the first release of this 11.2 stream. We're still on the continuous release um, model, which means we're targeting quarterly, quarterly release, but it's not always one release per quarter. It really depends on the type of features that we're working on and how long that may take to complete. Uh, we are expecting more releases this year for sure. Uh, continuous release cycle just means we're not going to get put out fixed packs after 11.2.0. Uh, the next one that we're coming out will still have features and fix packs together, very much like what we've been doing for 11.0 stream and 11.1 stream. Excellent. Um, a few questions about the installation, if this is an over-the-top installation versus uh, a brand new installation. And kind of related to that is, uh, you know, I think largely people are asking about installing uh, coming from 11.1 but could they even come from 11.0 and jump straight to 11.2? Yep, so it's still installed over top. We have not changed how you need to, what you, you may be installing 11.2.0. There's no change there. So if you have been really liking the install over top in the last few uh, releases, streams, then you can definitely continue doing that. Um, you can install over top of 11.2. One, you can install it uh, over top of 11.0. You can skip 11.1 stream entirely and upgrade from 11.0 directly to 11.2. Great, thank you. Um, there was uh, quite a bit of reaction to the, the IE11 deprecation, and I think the largest concern there was about the, the legacy studios. Um, you did speak to this, um, but there were quite a lot of, of questions there. So I just want to make sure it's, it's really kind of clear. Maybe you could just um, restate a bit, you know, the fact that, that the, the studios uh, do continue to be supported and, and the browsers that you can use with them. Yeah, so there are a few legacy studios. Um, that we need to talk about them separately. Query Studio Analysis Studio have been deprecated for a long time, for many, many years, uh, but they continue to be part of the product because we wanted to give customers enough time to move their users and content off. Um, and I know there are some feature gaps that we had to fill. We're getting much closer to fill all the gaps. So this is really a time for customers to uh, take another serious look at uh, moving their users off Query Studio Analysis Studio. I have conversations with customers, different customers weekly on this topic. Um, so please feel free to reach out if you need help. What I would suggest before you're reaching out is to evaluate either dashboard component or reporting component that we offer today and see if if there is a studio, the modern uh, component that would be suitable for you to move your users off. What you need to consider is how your users, either Create Studio or Analysis Studio, doesn't matter, how your users are using these studios today, what kind of tasks are they performing, and see if they can perform the same task, achieve the same results in either dashboard or report. Maybe the user experience will be different, but can they achieve the same results? What are some pain points? A list them out, a drop them down, prioritize them. I would like to gather all this from different customers and identify the common uh, pain points and prioritize them and perhaps uh, doing feature implementations in the product. So this is definitely the time to really move off Query Studio Analysis Studio. So for Power Play Studio, it is supported. Uh, software. Uh, it, so starting 11.2.0, it will work in Firefox, Google Chrome, and Chromium Edge. I think it's got enough browser conformance. That's no issue. The other thing would be Event Studio. Event Studio hasn't really been updated. Um, we do still want to continue supporting. We have no plan to deprecate it. The features are important. 
we're looking at technically uh, what's the feasibility of uh, supporting it in uh, Chrome, Google Chrome and Chromium Edge. And then we're also looking at feasibility of uh, porting that conformance update into a fixed pack in 11.1.7. And that is less likely, but it is something we're exploring currently. Great, thanks. And, and Event Studio, of course, does also work in Firefox yes. as well, just make sure people are, are clear that, that they have that option as well. Yes. Um, some other kind of themes that have been up, I'll, I'll, I'll address these actually. There, there was several questions about uh, any changes in, in admin and manage. Um, really not a whole lot uh, different there. The way that you access the, the manage UI is, is basically equivalent um, in 11.2. It's uh, through the hamburger menu instead of through an icon on the left um, labeled manage, um, but it's otherwise the same. So there's, there's not a ton of difference there. A lot of people are really interested in the customization. Uh, so um, I'll just uh, maybe elaborate on a couple of points there. Uh, one thing I want to make sure is clear is that uh, for those that have done extensions or other kinds of customizations in 11.1, uh, in those will be carried forward and they will continue to work. So they're all fully supported. This is not you know, a brand new um, architecture or anything like that for customizations. Everything new is, is built on the existing stuff and your existing customizations will work. There are one or two things because you can choose the positioning of customizations that are, are kind of no longer applicable. So we will map them to, to new uh, areas in the UI. So if you, if you don't like our choice of where, where we've mapped them to, of course, you can just update your extensions uh, to change that. But those, those still all work along with other types of customizations. For example, custom folders, which can be set by roles. That's a feature in 11.1 that continues to be there. That'll show up as a tab on the, on the content pane. Um, one of the coolest new customization features, I think, is that ability to create those additional tabs on the home page, uh, which can have two types of content. They can point to folders uh, in your content. So you they just list the contents of a folder and they give you the full content navigation view there. Or they can contain arbitrary JavaScript, which allows you to do really anything. I think in the example, uh, we had a report embedded there. You could embed other kinds of content. Perhaps you could in, uh, have you have some kind of news feed that you, you want to embed in there as well. So there's a lot of um, power that, that you have uh, with that. Um, Another also kind of on that topic was about SDK support. Uh, that is also carried forward. Uh, nothing there has been has been deprecated. Of course, we did introduce a ton of new APIs uh, last summer, uh, particularly for dashboards. Um, still there, but our, our, our older APIs are also still fully supported as well. Um, trying to look through just the the latest ones now um there were some questions yeah this this has come up a couple of times about um dashboards sharing dashboards scheduling dashboards um you know via in pdf or e emails that that kind of stuff um you know there, there hasn't been substantially any change there but maybe rachel you could just kind of elaborate on the the features that we have there with, with dashboards and, and sharing yeah, it hasn't really been changed. So currently we support sharing dashboard uh, via email or Slack integration. Um, you can uh, sh select to share the uh, dashboard via um, using a link or attach a image when you share in an email or, or a Slack integration. Um, we also have embed and share links where you can copy and paste um, outside of Cognos. Um, yeah, uh, I know people have asked about scheduling, and these are something that we're exploring right now. It's on the roadmap, but it's not part of this release. Great, thank you. I noticed um, we're at the top of the hour. I, I think I've uh, covered off the questions. I, I answered uh, most of you um, along the way in, in, the, in the chat. Um, but uh, it is uh, top the hour, so um, yeah, that's great, Tim. You're uh, okay. give your wrists a break, and your your keyboard's probably glowing red. Um, so yeah, thank you very much for uh, for handling that. That was excellent. Uh, so if you want to jump over to the last slide uh, in the deck, Rachel, first of all, I want to thank you, of course, for doing a great job. 
and uh, providing a lot of valuable information. I know everybody was really excited and, and has been anxiously awaiting this release. Uh, thank you, Tim, for coming in and helping out. And thank you, our audience, for taking some time out of your day today to join us on this event. If you do have any analytics needs, um, as I discussed earlier, please feel free to reach out to us at info at centurus.com. You can hit us up in the chat here, or if you still actually use a phone, um, we've got a 888 number there, 601-6010. So thank you very much for your time, and hopefully we'll see you soon on uh, our next Knowledge Series event. Have a great day. Thank you for having me. Have a good day. Thank you. Bye now.